to tonight. Uh, for those of you who have the Bible study, I'm going to talk about uh, something that uh, I've talked about before, but I just changed it up and redid it tonight as a theme. But it's attitude determines altitude. Your attitude determines altitude into 2021. We're getting ready to go into a new season. And uh, it, your attitude is going to determine how you approach this new season. Some folk are still going to be caught up with last year, this year's stuff. They're still going to be upset with folks that for things that took place in 2020. But uh, your attitude is going to deal with uh, whether you get the best out of your new season. Glory to God. And so I wanted to uh, talk about the first thing is posture. Posture. It's interesting. My wife always tells me, sit up, sit up. Sit up in the chair. All right, my posture. So posture, the first uh, uh, definition was the posture in which uh, someone holds their body when standing or sitting, your posture. Secondly, a particular way of dealing with or considering something, an approach or an attitude. It's an approach or an attitude. Glory to God. I want you to go to look at, you don't have to, I have it on the screen, Proverbs 23 and 7. For as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. We quote that scripture often. It says, eat, drink, saith he to thee, but his heart is not with you. The bottom line is this scripture, though we quote and stop at, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he, which is true. But in context, it's really saying somebody says to you, you sit down at their table and they say, eat, and drink. Uh, I got it just for you. In reality, they are unhappy with the fact that you're eating. In reality, they don't like it. And so that's what's in his heart. And that's who they are. But it's the same with us. Glory to God. As you think in your heart, as you think in the depths of yourself about a thing, that becomes you. All right. It's important for us to, to look at uh, what the scripture says concerning your attitude, your attitude. Uh, the next scripture is Proverbs 18, 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Glory to God. You Would you be careful? Write in the chat box. Be careful what you say. Come on, write it in there. Be careful what you say. Because your the words you say will direct your life. Can I talk to somebody? The words you declare will direct your life. Actually, often we follow the words that we speak. So we've got to be careful what we declare over ourselves over our family, over our children, over our church, and please, over your pastor, <laughs> be careful how you speak, because glory to God, the words you say, glory to God, dictates your life. Understand that if you're not careful, glory to God, uh, because perception is reality to the perceiver. Perception is reality to the perceiver. So with the way you see something, is how you believe it is. Anybody got that? Come on, put a put a put a, a raise your hand or put a thumbs up in your in your in the chat box. I mean, in the uh, reactions box, so that you understand. You you've got to be careful how you deal with something. Matter of fact, you can have a good situation and go into it with a bad attitude and mess it up, or not get all that it has to give you. Or you can go into a bad situation with a good attitude and it won't be nearly as bad as it could have been. Might even have to avoid staying there a long time. So perception and attitude makes the difference. Thank you can, thank you cannot. Either way, you're right. Think you can, think you cannot. Either way, you're right. Everybody got that? Glory to God. So it's important for us to understand what the Lord is saying to us in the scriptures. Uh, excuse me, brother. Let me go up a, a little bit, go down a little bit. And it says this. How, how, how do you see, approach, or consider next year's opportunities in life or in Christ? How do you see, approach, or consider next year's opportunities in your life or in your life in Christ? How do you see yourself? Do you see yourself, glory to God, do you consider that tomorrow is going to be walking in overflow? Do you see yourself living more effectively than you did in 2020? 
If that's you, you ought to put that hand up in your in your in your reactions box. If you see that, uh, do you see? Are you achieving? Are you going to achieve uh, some goals that you have been expecting for a long time? They haven't gotten you yet, but you're going to get them in 2021. Is that your attitude? Is that the way you proceed next year? Can I talk to somebody? Your attitude will make the difference. Or are you going to be having more to say? Nothing's going to change. Here we go again. Why even bother? I never win. I don't even know why we spending our time on this. We don't never get along. We don't never see eye to eye. You don't never talk to me well. You don't never hold my hand. You don't never talk. You don't never, you don't never, glory to God. If that's the way you're going to do it, everybody's out to get me. I don't care what happened, glory to God. They out to get me. Those folks out to get me. And the church folks don't like me. And you know, church people is, listen, you've got to get to a place where you determine that I'm going to be successful. God's going to bless me. Glory to God. Matter of fact, I'm walking in expectation. Come on right in the chat box. Expectation. I'm walking in expectation. I know God's going to open some doors for me. I wish I was talking about five or six folks tonight, glory to God, who are willing to change your perspective, who are willing to lift up your head. Somebody said, lift up your head over your gates and be lifted up the everlasting doors and the king of glory shall come in. The Lord tells us to lift up your head. Stop being discouraged and frustrated. You're going to have difficulty. That's a part of life. You're not going to get everything you want when you want it. That's a part of life. But you got to walk in expectation. You've got to decide, I'm going to get an overflow at any moment now. Watch out. Watch out, y'all. Watch out. Watch out. I'm going to get so much that it's going to be runoff. God's going to bless me so good that he's going to bless me. And because you're walking with me, you're going to get a blessing. Somebody ought to say amen. Glory to God. Somebody ought to declare amen to that. Glory to God. That's how you have to approach your life. We've had some difficulty. All of us have. You know, some of us were abused growing up in many different ways. Abuse came. Some of us, yeah, glory to God, we created the abuse ourselves. Glory to God. Some of us was out drinking and whatever and went to jail. And some of us wrecked a whole bunch of cars and some of us wrecked a whole bunch of relationships. Glory to God. But from this point forward, it's, it ain't nothing but better. I'm going to say better, 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 <laughs> better, better, better. I'm not going to be bitter. I'm going to be better. I will not be bitter. I will be better. Can I talk to somebody? That's how you've got to approach this thing. Glory to God. You've got to approach it as though God has already sanctioned your blessing. He's already dispatched it. Uh, somebody talked about the fact that when I think it was other when 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 Daniel prayed, the Lord heard him as soon as he prayed, and the angel was dispatched at that time. He got held up by the prince of Persia. Demons began to stop him, and he had to fight his way through. But he fought his way through, and he got there. And your blessing is going to be right on time. Can I talk to somebody? Somebody ought to put it in the chat box. My blessing is on time. The Bible says, though it tarry, it will not tarry. You might have to wait a while, but it won't be late. That's what that scripture means. Though it tarry, it will not tarry. You might have to wait, but it won't be late. Glory to God. It's going to be right on time. Glory to God. So you need to kind of get this. God's going, God wants you to be better and not bitter. God does not want you to hold on to past hurts and difficulties and uh, mistreatment. Because what that does is it casts a shadow over your eyes. And you see life through a film. You see life through a dull film, shade. You can't see it as clearly as you need to see it. When I'm at the computer, I have these glasses on. <laughs> Excuse me. And these glasses are much, have a, a lighter prescription. Glory to God. They're reading glasses, but they're lighter. They're 125. But when I begin to read, I need something stronger. I need a 250. 225. What I'm saying to you is when I have these glasses on, I can see the screen real good. But if my prescription is off, it's blurry. It's blurry. 
And so uh, what you got to do is understand that you got to ask God to give you another prescription about your life. Ask God to help me see my life more clearly. Help me to see my life the way you see my life. God, help me to see my life the way you see my life. Come on, write in the chat box. Attitude determines altitude. It's right there. I need you to write it down. Because when you write it, it'll get in your spirit. When you write it, you'll remember it. So whenever things don't go the way you want them to go, or it looks like they're not going that way, change your attitude about it. Just start speaking life. Just start speaking life. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. They that love us shall eat the fruit thereof. Death and life. So speak life. Declare blessings over your life, blessings over your children. Doesn't matter what it looks like. Don't, don't, don't base what you say only on what you see or of your past. Because that's what perception is. This is what I see or this is how it's been. And that makes it reality to you. But if you look at it through the lens of God's word, if you look at it through the lens of God's word, you have more. Then enough. I might not have gotten a 2018 Escalade. Actually, what I got was a 2012 Honda City. But it rides real good. It's light on gas. Gets me where I need to go. And I save a little money. So thank you, Lord. Thank you. I'm not struggling as hard. You got to look at what's going on. Yes, she got up and left. Yeah, they got her. He got up and took off. Glory to God. And when he took off, he cleaned out the bank account. But now I can start again and I don't have anybody that's going to take my money. And whoever God gives me next is going to be one. He sends me. Not going to be one I go out and get because they look good or because they meet a certain standard. Glory to God. Am I talking to anybody today? You've got to take another perspective, another, another view of what's going on in your life. This is what I want you to do tonight. This is what I want you to do, which is why I asked you to get, uh, glory to God, your Bible. This phrase serves, this phrase attitude, it, it, it will change where you are. If you will work on changing your attitude, it'll take you to another level of living. Might not make any more money, but you will be at another level of living. And I talk to somebody. Glory to God. In fact, if you change your attitude, even your friends, your environment will shift. Because certain things you won't allow to stay there. And you'll seek and begin to go after those things that are healthy for you. That work for you. That build you up. You won't get around people that you always have to feed. You always have to bless. You always have to tell them they're wonderful and marvelous and go get them and, and give them your money. And glory to God. Go buy them all that stuff. You know, uh, somebody said it the other day, but the, it is the truth. Glory to God. A narcissist, kind of like your president, and president, a narcissist is somebody you can never satisfy. You can never satisfy. All right. And so you got to make sure that you get with people that you can satisfy, that 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 uh, that will be able to not come and get everything you got, but rather you'll give and they'll give. You'll help and they'll help. You'll speak and they'll speak. Can I talk to somebody? Every conversation is not always about them, nor is it always about you. Okay, so in the scriptures below, this is what I want you to do on your paper. Glory to God. Let me do this a little differently, uh, Brother Governor. Uh, please write three scriptures, and we're going to do these together. Write three scriptures of encouragement and one phrase, one word or phrase in that scripture that stands out. So I can do all things. The scripture you just put up there, put it back. Because I want, okay, I can do all things through Christ that strengtheneth me or strengthens me. Anytime you see ETH on the end of the word, that's the same as putting an S there. So it means continues to. Can I help somebody? 
All right. So whenever you read in the, for instance, the King James version, and it says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. This one is uh, probably out of New King James or something of that. And it says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens. Both of the same. The S is the same as the ETH. So in this one, it says, I can do all things through Christ, him who strengthens me. So what word jumps out and makes that scripture powerful for you, makes it personal for you? Somebody say something. Strengthens. Strengthens is what grabs you. So in box number, line number two, or highlight that, I want you to make sure that that word sticks out. Amen? It sticks out. Somebody might say, I can do all things. That's your phrase. Whatever you, that scripture speaks to you, grab a hold of it. This is actually is about exegeting the scriptures, getting what's in there, squeezing, squeezing the scriptures. Like you do with a rag when you wash the dishes, glory to God, and you get ready to get through washing the dishes, you get that rag and you twist it to get all of it out of there. Glory to God. Go to the scripture and get all of it out of there. Somebody write in the chat box, get it all. Amen. You got to get it all. Don't just read past stuff. There's so much help, so much nourishment, so much encouragement and joy in the scriptures. So that tells me I can do all things because my strength is really in Christ, not in myself. All right. That's that's one scripture. Thank you. Is there somebody else with a scripture? Somebody else with a scripture. Okay. Some, somebody put something, something in Don't the say chat. Don't say nothing. I ain't, I ain't going nowhere. Go ahead. <laughs> somebody put something in the chat. Okay. Um, let me see. Oh, I thought they did. I can't find it now. All right. How about on, Second Timothy down. one through seven? What is it? Second Timothy one and seven. So read it for me, brother. And I need you all to kind of go there. Write your scripture as well. What, is, what does it say to you? It says, for God gave us a spirit not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. The word right. that grabbed me was love and self-control. All right. So put that scripture in there, uh, Brother Governor, if you don't mind. God has not given me the spirit of fear but of power and love and the version that you read, self-control. Some say of a sound mind, but that's the same thing. Self-control, all right? And for you, it was, what was it? Power and love? And self-control. Power and self-control, all right. Glory to God. And those are the two things that jumped out. Somebody else that might say love, all right? So it's important that you look into the scripture and get the best, get it all out, because there's so much more. And I promise you, when you go back to that same scripture again, God's going to show you something else. God will show you, so you can never exhaust the word of God. None of us will ever be able to get all of it out. Amen. There's always more. There's always more. Amen. Can, can you put that scripture there, uh, Brother Governor, if you don't mind? What was the scripture, First Timothy? Second Timothy, Second Timothy. Uh, one and seven. One and seven. All right. Second Timothy, one and seven. Somebody else. Taking this, mothers. Have Isaiah forty-one and ten. Mm -hmm. So do not fear. I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am with. I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And, the and that's word, what scripture is that? Isaiah, Isaiah, 40, Isaiah 41 and 10. I guess I guess you really like that scripture, but Governor, you made that put in that 30 font. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. All right. Isaiah 41 and 10. Amen. We're going to put that in there as well. Glory and, to God. And the word and, fear. Mm -hmm. Fear stands out for me. 
fear stands out. Yes. And read that scripture again. So do not fear. I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. You're working on that word, Governor. <laughs> okay. 41 and 10. That's powerful. And so fear stood out for you. Somebody else say, the Lord will uphold me with his righteous right hand. All right. And understand that the right hand of God is very significant because it represents power, prosperity, pro provision, and protection. All right. The right hand of God. Jesus sits at the right hand of the Father. The right hand of God is, is powerful. Amen. And so, you know, somebody might get that out of there. And that's what you need to get when you go into the scripture. Because your strength and your deliverance is in the word of God. It's in the word of God. And so, you can't. Somebody brings dinner to the table. Glory to God. And, and, and when they put the dinner on the table, glory to God, you take a bite and spit it out. Take a bite and spit it out. You're not going to get any nourishment out of that. And so what you have to do is chew on it and, and then digest it. Ingest and digest so you can grow by it. Can I talk to somebody? It's critical if you're going to do this, glory to God, in the way that God wants you to do it. So you can get all that God has for you in the scriptures. Thank you. I'm going to go down a little bit. Anybody else have a scripture you want to share with us tonight? Yes. Missionary Ivory. Second Corinthians 12 and 9. Second Corinthians. I hope you all are writing these down. Amen. Writing these down. All right. Second Corinthians 12 and 9. What does it say, missionary? And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. All right. All right. Y'all write that down. That's good. My grace. And what words jump out for you, sis? What, what, what jumps out for me is that his grace is all I need. <laughs> His grace is all I need. That's good. His grace is sufficient. It's all I need. Uh, glory to God. Y'all got that? I hope you're I hope you're jotting this down. I hope you're getting this. I want to make sure that we are going into 2021 with a new attitude, with elevated uh, expectations with our heads lifted up, not spending our time on what went wrong or what didn't go the way I wanted it to go. Or even if it did go well, you're looking for even more in 2021. Can I talk to somebody? Glory to God. You want to do that. I, you've heard me say, those of you who have been around Solid Rock for a while have heard me use the analogy that you don't drive in your rear view mirror. You don't drive in your rear view mirror. You take a backwards look, but you have a forward view. Every once in a while, you see what, where you come from. Glory to God. But you live in your windshield. That's where I'm going. And that's what you want to do in this life going forward. Live in your windshield and expect that God's going to get you to the desired destination. And I've talked to five people. Glory to God. Let me go to, a, are there any others? Anybody else had something? Deaconess Mothers and myself. Yes, come on. Oh, no, I, I already said mine. Okay. Okay, your hands were still up. Okay, oh, I have sorry. Psalms 121 and verse 7. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. And the word that stood out for me is shall in all. These shall and all? Yes, yeah, shall and okay. all. Shall and all. Not only that he's going to do it, but he's going to do it all. He's going to do it and he's going to do it all. Hallelujah. 
And mine was preserved. I look, he's going to preserve me. You know what that kind of reminds me of was when I was growing up. My, my grandmama used to make them preserves. Y'all don't know nothing about that. But we go uh, up in the field and we'd be getting getting those fruit off the trees. We pick them and we bring bags of, of plums and cherries and all that back to the house. And my grandma would make uh, preserves, make jelly and jam and all that. Glory to God. And, uh, we had that stuff for winter. Amen. Because we have, she, he, she would preserve, it would preserve and be good for, for months. And when they put that seal on it, couldn't nothing get in. Glory to God. And that's how it is with our, us and God. He puts a seal on you and he preserves you till he comes back to get you. Ooh, that bless my soul. I don't know. <laughs> Glory Amen. to God. Is there anybody else? If not, I'm going to move on because we've got to get our certificates tonight. But I hope you all are getting something out of this. I'm doing my very best to kind of urge you, to nudge you, to push you forward, to, to spend time in God's word. You know, some folk been going to church and they've been just going to church and just just going to church. And, you know, church people. I want to go. I want. I don't want to just go to the restaurant. I want to eat. Glory to God. <laughs> I got yeah. one. I want to make sure that uh, God is feeding me and he's feeding you by his word. Amen. Amen. I put a couple of other scriptures down here. Uh, Ephesians chapter 3 and 20 says, Now unto him who is able, and I put it in the Amplified, incidentally, y'all. Uh, you can read it in the New King James or the King James or uh, the Good News Bible, whatever it is. But I, I used the Amplified because I thought it was very, very descriptive. And it says, Now unto him who is able to carry out his purpose and to do super abundantly more than all you dare ask or think. My God, stop right there. More than I ask or think. He's able to do super, and I like that word super abundantly. He's able to do super abundantly more than you can even come up with it in your mind. How many know we got some serious imaginations? I guess I'm not talking to nobody. Got some serious imagination. We can think of some stuff. My God, I want you to do it, Lord. And he's able to do even above that, infinitely beyond your greatest prayers, your greatest hopes, or your greatest dreams, according to the power, his power, that is at work in us. His power is at work in us, the Holy Ghost. Come on, say the Holy Ghost. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. And so he's able to do all of those things. He can, he can do greater than you can ever imagine him do. That's his ability and that's his desire. And so to him be glory. Then the next scripture is trust in the Lord with all your heart. And do not lean to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Somebody write in the chat box the word that st stands out to you there or the phrase. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make straight your path. He'll direct your path. Put something in the chat box. What stands out to you? Come on. Let me see. Are you listening? Are you, are you getting anything out of this? Glory to God. Trust in the Lord, somebody say, direct my path, direct your path, glory to God. I see that a couple of times. Glory to God. And so that's important for us to get this. Make your path straight. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. So we praise God for each, each of those who have joined in. Turn, Go on to the next set of scriptures, and we got to get on through this because uh, I've got to cut this off here in about five minutes. So that we can get to the uh, certificates. But I put a few scriptures down here that if you will focus on them, they will minister to you and encourage your heart. My goal tonight is to get you to look at your life differently. Look at it from a different perspective. If it was bad, God's going to make it good. If your view of your life was blurry, he's going to clear it up. If it was good, God's going to make it even better. 
If you're struggling, God's going to give you strength. If you can't see your way, he's going to give you a Holy Ghost GPS. Glory to God. So we can go through these scriptures. We won't go through them tonight. But I, I, I pray that everybody gets a copy of this and put it somewhere where you can go to when you feel like you're struggling, when you feel like you can't make it, when you feel like uh, you're pushing against the odds, that there's, there's a wall standing there. Glory to God. God will break through. John 16. Well, you know what? Let me do this. I want to go to Jeremiah 29 and 10, since I'm only going to go through this for a couple more minutes. At the end of the Jeremiah 29 and 10, I kind of broke that one up a little bit. Now, we we most of us can quote this scripture. Glory to God. And so what I put in was, for thus says the Lord, after 70 years are completed in Babylon. After. Because it says that you're going to have some difficulty. But be of good cheer. All right. Don't worry about it. You're going to have some stuff. You, you in life, you're in this life. You're not of the world, but you are in the world. So you're going to have some difficulty. He said. But after you've gone through your Babylon, he said, I will visit you and perform my good work toward you. When you go to work, when you get a job, they don't give you. Even though they're giving you, uh, you know, $25 an hour, they don't give you the check the day you start. You got to put in some work. And then at the end, you receive the reward. And he says, after you've gone through what you've gone through, I will visit you and perform my good work towards you and cause you to return back to your home. Return back to this place. All right. I'm going to bring you out. Bring me out, Lord. Bring me out, Lord. Bring me out of this broken heart. Bring me out of this depression. Bring me out of this frustration. Bring me out of this difficulty. Bring me out of this insecurity. Bring me out of this inferiority complex. Bring me out of blaming everybody else for what's going on with me. All right. Then he says, then you will call me and go and pray to me and I will listen to you. Verse 13, and you will seek me and find me. He said, when you look for me, not only look, but when you seek me, you go find me. I'm going to be found of you when you search for me with your whole heart. When you mean what you're looking for. And the more you want him, the more he'll come in. The more you trust him, the more he can do for you. The hold up with the blessings you're receiving from God is not him. Glory to God, it's not him. He says, I will be found by you, says the Lord, and I will bring you back from your captivity, and I will gather you from all of the places you've been spread out, where I've driven you, says the Lord, and I will bring you to a place from which I cause you to be carried away. Now, the reason that happened is because we were not living the life God calls us to live, or we were not living up to what God wants us to live. And that's why he wants you to know him more, become intimate with God. And the way to become intimate with God is through his word. God is his word. God is his word. So I close by saying, in many cases, your perception is your reality. If you think, glory to God, that they don't like you, that's how you perceive it. And in fact, they don't like you to you. To you. If you think you can't do it, you can't do it. All right. If you think you can, you can. And sometimes you have to put in a little extra work, but you get it done. Therefore, if you don't see your tomorrow victoriously, you got to change your posture. And back to the first word I was at. You got to change your posture. Get to a place where you see better. Sit up in your chair so you can see more clearly. Stand up and make your back straight. Change your posture, your approach, your attitude. You got to change that thing. You, you got to come with, I can do all things through Christ. That's my posture. I can do all things through Christ because he strengthens me. That's my posture. My posture is all things are working together for my good because I love the Lord and I've been called according to his purpose. That's where I am. That's my approach. That's my perspective. I close with attitude determines altitude.
God bless you all tonight. You love the Lord right where you are. Would you clap your hands and give him praise? Right where you are. Hallelujah. Come on, bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Attitude determines altitude. Glory to God. All right. Tonight, I'm going to turn it over to those that are in charge of the instructional hour and the certificates for those who graduated. And uh, so some others, Michelle, Burnett, Bennett, who all, who's going to cover that? I should have found that out last night, but come on. Missionary Smothers, the Deacon Smothers? Yes, sir. Who's, so, who's? We didn't talk about that, but it's fine either way for me. I have the names here, and if we're just going to call the names, then they can accept their certification certificate for the Bible Institute class that they took group. Who, who has a copy in? of them? I think in? The, who has a copy of them? We can put them on the screen and then you, we can call uh, them in. Missionary Green is chiming in, so let she's got something to say. So we do have the names um, to roll in for the different courses. Um, Deacon Keys will, um, I believe, share them that screen that with um, Brother Jackson or himself, and we will call those names out um, per the classes. And Deacon Keys, if you can put the first um, oh, certificate wow. classes up there. Elder Keys, I'm sorry. So we had two classes for those of you who were not there. We had two classes in the, in the Bible Institute, Foundations for Discipleship and Exploring Our Faith. This is Foundations for Discipleship. And those individuals who have um, certified will to have completed the course and, or, and or participate in the course um, will be acknowledged tonight for their, um, their successes. And as soon as um, Elder Keys bring it on screen, and, am it's I saying something? Uh, oh, okay. Mine is, uh, I don't see. It. I'm sorry. Um, so, oh, the one she was clapping. So it says here, um, and it will read moving forward um, the same. So this is the Solid Rock Bible Institute certificate of completion. This certified. Um, is, this certificate is probably presented to Deaconess Pauline Jackson. Mm -hmm. This certificate confirms upon the above mentioned name has successfully completed foundations for discipleship giving at Newark, California, this 13th day of September in the year of 2020. Um, and it's signed by the coordinator um, of the Bible Institute, myself, Elder Keys, administrator, um, and the two instructors in charge, which is missionary Adrian Bennett and Deacon is um, Vicki Smothers. And the host of this of our uh, institute is our own superintendent, Gerald K. Simpson, also our assistant, a senior pastor of Solid Rock Church God in Christ. Our next recipient. Sister Mother has something to say. Sister Mother. I would like to say, if I may, if we, myself and and Missionary Bennett can sh share the calling of the names. Sure. For our By meeting, all means. If that would be okay. Absolutely. So if, okay, um, Missionary Bennett, if you want to go next. If not, just put the next name up. I'll call. It. It. She's. Unmute yourself. You have oh. to do that. Oh, okay. okay. Sister Sybil Sadler. Sister Malika Gardner. And missionary Robin Smith. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Sister Bonnie, Bonnie Ibarra. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. And Sister Tanisha Askew. Yay. And Sister Maisha Jefferson. Can we Thank applaud you. them? Yeah. They completed the course. Yay. Wonderful. Come on, give God some praise for all of those. Amen, if you will, for those that attended those classes. This is um, Exploring Our Faith. Um, the instructors were our own elder um, Paul Brown and um, Elder Dominic Keith.
The certificate also explains the same and that it is given to the person named above, completing the course of exploring our faith on the sixth day of October, 2020. And it is also signed by the instructors. Minister <laughs> Willie Green, Sr. <laughs> Missionary Sheila A. Simpkins. Yay! Deacon Ricardo Burnett, Sr. Yay! Missionary Corrine Burnett. Yay! Yay! <laughs> Missionary Laquinete Brooks, Missionary Brooks. I apologize for chopping your name, but Missionary Brooks. Missionary Charlena White, Charlene White, Mother White, from Tracy location. Deaconess Rachelle Brown. Yeah. Brother Billy. Sh Sh Sandy. 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 Sister Sharon Boyd. Sister Bernice Turner. Yay! <laughs> Those are our graduates. Congratulations to you all. Thank you. Glory to God. Thank you very much. Could you all, glory to God, would you give God some praise? I know we can't see all the faces. Everybody is, is kind of hidden behind a little name tag. But would you bless the name of the Lord, put a little uh, high five or thumbs up or something in your, uh, in your reactions box. Amen. And then join in on this celebration. Amen. We, we do celebrate these individuals. Uh, this was our first opportunity. And we decided to go... Uh, to go to another level, to do some things differently uh, during the pandemic. And uh, we're, we're going to do it again. We're going to prepare ourselves so that we can have some other subjects uh, going into February. It is, it is our goal that we will launch our next class. They're about eight weeks long. Is that right? Yes. All right. They're about eight weeks long. Glory to God. And uh, and I shared with the church, it is my goal that we would be able to attract a, a college to come and use our church uh, and be a part of what we're doing, uh, a, you know, a seminary or a Bible college. Amen. And we want to do that. But you got to get started. You got to get started someplace. Now I'm talking about looking up. I'm changing my perspective. I'm, 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 I believe God. Amen. How you going to do that, superintendent? Watch. Glory to God. Amen. Just come along. Watch. Amen. And God's going to open the door because all we're trying to do is know more about him. Be more clear about him. Then people can't pull the wool over your eyes when you know. Amen. 